Hi everyone. Welcome to today's class on arithmetic progression. But before we begin, let's understand what progression means. Progression literally means succession of things. Or in other words, when things are developing and moving forward. Mathematically, we say when the change in given intervals is fixed, it is a progression. Or sequences which follow a specific pattern are said to be in progression. They can be different types of progression. We would be studying arithmetic, geometric and harmonic progression. But today we would be doing arithmetic progression. Let's see what arithmetic progression is. If in a given sequence each term differs the next term by a fixed constant, it is called an arithmetic progression. Or in other words, any sequence where the difference between two consecutive terms is the same is said to be in an arithmetic progression. We write in short AP for arithmetic progression. Then this fixed difference we were talking about between two consecutive terms is called the common difference and it is denoted by the small letter D. Let's look at some examples and then it will be clear. What if we are given a sequence of counting numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 going up to infinity? We say that forms an arithmetic progression. Let's see. If we take the difference of second term and first term, second term minus first term. You know that second term is 2, first term is 1, the difference gives us 1. Take the difference of third term minus the second term. That you see will be 3 minus 2 and that is also 1. Take the difference of fourth term and the third term you will say 4 minus 3 is also 1. So what are we doing? We are taking difference of consecutive terms and we see it is uniformly 1. Here we say d value is 1. As it is the same, we say the counting numbers form an arithmetic progression. Come to the second question. Here we are given a sequence of even numbers 2, 4, 6, 8 and we say it forms an arithmetic progression. When will it form an arithmetic progression? When the difference between the consecutive terms is same. So let's see 4 minus 2. The difference between second and first term is nothing but the difference between third and the second term is 6 minus 4, which is also 2. The difference between the fourth and the third term, 8 minus 6, is also 2. You go on taking the difference, you'll see that d value will be uniformly 2. So here d is same, it is uniformly 2. Hence, it forms an arithmetic progression. Come to the sequence 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1, 1, it goes on. Here, let's see the difference. So, if I take the difference of our second term and the first term, we'll have minus 1, minus 1, which is nothing but minus 2. Take the here we took say a difference of second and first term. Take the difference of third and the second term. Third term is one. Second term is minus one. We are taking their difference. Or you can say third term minus the second term. This will give us two. Take the difference of fourth term minus the third term, which is minus one, minus of one, which gives us minus 2. Take the difference of the fifth 
and fourth term we'll get 1 minus of 1 which is nothing but 2. So you see alternately we are getting the difference as minus 2, 2, minus 2, 2, minus 2, 2. D is not same. As D is not uniform, D is not same. It's not an AP. How do we represent an arithmetic progression? Let's see. What if we are given a sequence whose first term is A and the common difference is small d, that is, the difference between the consecutive terms is uniformly d. Then how do we write the arithmetic progression? We start with the first term a. Now add the common difference to that. We'll add d, we'll get the second term. Add d to the second term, we'll get a plus 2d, we get the third term. This is how on going on adding d, we get our nth term as a plus n minus 1 d, depending on whether it's a finite or infinite progression, we have the number of terms. So, why do we say that the nth term is a plus n minus 1 d? Just see, when we take a to be the first term, we write it as a1. a1 is nothing but a. The second term is written as a2 and that is a plus d. Now you see, in the second term, a2, the coefficient of d is 1. In the third term, a3, the third term is a plus 2d. Here we have the coefficient of d as 2 times d. So, whatever term we are taking, the coefficient of d is 1 less. So, when we take a n, our coefficient of d will be 1 less than n. So, it is n minus 1 d. We say that the nth term of an arithmetic progression is a n and that is written as a plus n minus 1 d. Now, if we know the first term, we know the common difference d, then we can always find any term which has been asked. Now, what is an arithmetic series? If you add all the terms of your sequence, that gives us an arithmetic series. So, we just added a plus a plus d plus a plus 2d dash dash a plus n minus 1d goes on. One thing you have to remember, if you add, subtract or multiply each term of an arithmetic progression by a constant, your sequence will still remain an arithmetic progression. So, how do we find the sum of n terms of an arithmetic progression? Let's see. The notation which is used for sum of n terms is Sn. And the sum is nothing but n by 2, 2 times a plus n minus 1 d. What if we split this 2a? So, we can write it as n by 2 a plus a plus n minus 1 d. Now, this term, you know, a plus n minus d is nothing but a n. You have already seen that's the nth term. Here, you have it. So, our sum becomes n by 2 a plus a n. The two formulas which we use for finding the sum are these this one and this one. So, let us look at some examples.
In the first example, what if we are asked to find the sum, find the sum of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now you see here, easy way is to just go on adding. Or here, if we use the formula, it becomes much easy for us to find. So what is the solution? Let's see here. N value is nothing but 10. You are given 10 terms of a sequence. And we have the common difference D as 1. So A value is 1. Put in the formula. S10, the sum of 10 terms, will be nothing but 10 n by 2, that is 10 by 2, 2 times a plus n minus 1, n was 10, into d which is 1. You will see this on simplifying will give us the sum as 55. Or you could have easily used our second formula also. Let's come to the second example. Here, we are asked to find the sum, find the sum of 15 terms of the sequence One minus one minus three minus five minus seven dash dash dash. Now, what if only this information is given to us? So here you see that our a value is nothing but one. And let's check whether the common difference is uniform or not. We'll see the common difference, second term minus the first term is nothing but minus 2, minus 3, minus of minus 1 is again minus 2. So this is an arithmetic progression. N value here for us is given to be 15. So what will be our sum? Our S15 will be nothing but 15 by 2, 2 times a plus 15 minus 1 into the common difference minus 2. Now you see, when you simplify this, you will get the answer as minus 195. So the sum of our 15 terms of this sequence is nothing but minus 195. Okay guys, let's do some more problems. What if you are asked to find question number 3? How many 2 digit numbers Numbers are there which are divisible by five. Now, for such a question, we can again use our knowledge of AP. Let's see. So here you are given that a 
difference between the numbers is 5. And from where do the two digit numbers start? So let us see. Two digit numbers start from 10 and go up to 99. Now, it means that all the numbers which are divisible by 5, either they are divisible, either they end by 5 or they end with a 0. So, here the common difference as all these numbers will be multiple, multiples of 5. It means our common difference D is 5. Now, A will be 10. The common difference is 5. So, what type of a sequence are we getting? We will get the sequence as 10, 15, 20. It goes on and it will go up to 95 because our numbers have to be multiples of 5. Now, here D is 5. So, we have, let me write these values once again. A value is 10, D value is 5 and we need to find our N. And N has to be found. So you see here, my Nth term here is 95. So our An is nothing but 95. We'll use the formula for nth term. So we will have a n is equal to a plus n minus 1 d. This is 95. a value is 10. n we need to find and the common difference is 5. Simplify. You will get n comes out to be 18. So there are 18 terms. There are 18 terms of two digit of two digit which are divisible by five. Let's come to another question. What if we are given? So this was question number three. Let's go to question number four. If fourth term of and AP is nine and the seventh term is 27. Find the arithmetic progression. Find the AP. Now see, nothing has been given. We are only told that fourth term of an AP is 9 and the seventh term is 27. So, we will use the nth term formula. A n is a plus n minus 1 d. We do not know what a is. We do not know what d is. But we do know that the fourth and the seventh term are given to us. So, the fourth term. Let's come to that. So, the fourth term is given to us as 9. So, fourth term is 9. We will start by 9 is equal to A. We do not know what A is. And we are taking 
n to be 4. So, fourth term, I'll just write a 4, a fourth term. So, n is 4. So, we have 4 minus 1 into d. Now, we get one equation here. What is that? a plus 3d is equal to 9. So, we have one equation here. Now, come to the seventh term. So, a7 is nothing but a seventh term. And you know that a7 is given to be 27. So, 27 is equal to a plus 7 minus 1 into d. Now, this on simplifying gives us a plus 6d is equal to 27. You have two equations in two unknowns a and d. So, we solve. We will solve a plus 3d is equal to 9 and a plus 6d is equal to 27. Simultaneous equations is what we use to solving and it will give us d value as 6 and a value as minus 9. So now this means we start the series with minus 9 because our a is minus 9. Then add 6 to that. If you add 6 to that, you'll get minus 3. We get the second term. Again add 6 to that, you will get the next term 3. Again add 6 to that, we'll get 9. So this is our AP. Let's write it. The arithmetic progression is minus 9, minus 3, 3, 9 goes on. See, here your fourth term which was given to us is 9. It was given to us in the question. So, this is the arithmetic progression. Let's look at another question. What if you are given an income of a person, income of a person in the year 2024 is dollars 43200 per annum with an increment with an increment year of 3200 in which year will his income become become dollars five nine two zero zero. Now here, see, we can use our formulas of AP to solve this. Let's find the solution. So what is A for us? A is given to be dollars four three two Zero, zero. D the increment every year because that is going to remain same. We take D to be 3200. N is to be found. That's an unknown. So what will we do? We will find our N value. So what is the formula? which we are going to use here. We will use 5, 9, 2, 
zero zero is equal to four three two zero zero plus n minus one into the common difference three two zero zero. Now our nth term here is nothing but five nine two zero zero. Let me write here a n is five nine two zero zero. So we have used the formula a n is equal to a plus n minus one d. So a n value is five nine two zero zero. A value is four three two zero zero. N we do not know n minus one into d. If you solve your n value from this will come out to be six, which means six years from now. Six years from now, his salary will be dollars five nine two zero zero. Now, if you add six to two zero two four plus six, means two zero thirty in the year. Twenty thirty. So this is the year in which his salary would become five nine two zero zero. Let's do one more question here. So here we are given if the difference between any two consecutive interior angles of a polygon is twenty degrees and they have also given that the smallest angle is also 20 degrees. Find the number of sides of the polygon. Now, one thing you need to know. Let's take the example of a pentagon. You know that each side of the pentagon would be subtending some angle at the center. And the sum of all these angles, the total will be 360 degrees. So, if here, as in our question, they've given us smallest angle is 20 degrees, which means that our A1 is 20 degrees. And each angle differs by the common difference of 20. So what will be my nth angle? That will be 360. A2, let me write, A2 will be 40, we are just adding 20. A3 will be 60. And in the end, you know that the nth angle will be 360 degrees. Because when we go on adding 20, 20, 20, finally we will have 360 degrees. So common difference here, D is 20 degrees. So Let's find from the nth term formula, a n is equal to a plus n minus 1 d, put a n as 360, a as 20, the number of sides is unknown to us but d is 20. You will see that you subtract 20 from 360, you get 340, divided by 20, you will get n minus 1 is 17 or n is equal to 18. So there are 18 sides. There are 18 sides of the polygon. There are 18 sides of the polygon. Our next topic would be Ancient Indian Mathematics and Series. I'm still on arithmetic progression. I just wanted to take some examples from our uh, ancient texts and see how the problems were solved at that time and what were the formulas Indian mathematicians were using during the Vedic period. For uh, other topics, you can 
go to my website profprithibajpay.com you will find in remedial all the notes and the practice problems thanks a lot for watching